Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic, and today I'm here to talk about Season 1, Episode 6 of Apple TV's Sugar, entitled Go Home. <laughs> they really dragged that out, didn't they? <laughs> like, I was legitimately watching, like, if they go another episode without revealing John's deal, <laughs> I think I'm gonna be irritated by this. <laughs> like... They really ramped up the clues in this episode, but as it was ending and everyone continued to kind of be cagey with John, I thought, man, they might push this shit back another episode. But uh, they didn't. And even though the reveal obviously wasn't shocking to me, I thoroughly enjoyed this episode. And I feel like the execution of the reveal was really well done. And I don't mean just in this episode. I mean everything that preceded it in this season that led up to it. How it kind of felt like... It was never the focus. Like, like, hey, there's John's got a deal. Let's really get the viewer to hone in on that. It always kind of felt like, oh, there's also this other thing going on. And I like how such a big reveal like this is still kind of like a minor piece of this story. Like, like I said, they didn't push it back. Uh, if I had to make one criticism of it, I think they underestimated the impact of one fucking line. <laughs> and when I say when I say it, um, criticism of it, I mean it being the entire execution of, of the reveal about John. Like, so I didn't enter into this show looking for a twist or expecting one. I knew something would fundamentally change at some point. I knew that something was going to happen, but not necessarily anything like a twist or anything like that. Uh, so I wasn't looking for clues. Episode one, though, showed us John having issues with his hand and an interesting obsession with movies, but nothing that would point me in the direction of where they ultimately ended up. I likely would have taken way longer to land, <laughs> to land on Alien if I had, if I had ever, I'm sorry, if I'd have, if I'd have ever gotten there at all. So when I say I, it would have taken me longer if I had ever got... That's really hard for me to say right now. If I had ever gotten there at all, if it weren't for the fact that Ruby had one line, and you guys know what I'm talking about because I honed in on it in my video. I think it's for episode two. She said, we're supposed to be observing these people. As soon as I heard observing these people, my mind immediately went to Alien. And I, I, I believe that's where they fucked up. And I, I, again, fucked up, I'm using very, very loosely here. It had no impact on my enjoyment of the angle, the execution, the reveal, none of that. But I just feel like I could have been in the dark much longer if it weren't for those three words of observing these people. If that had been, uh, we're supposed to be making objective observations, John, and your notes tell me that you're too emotionally involved. I wouldn't have thought anything of it, and it probably would have taken me much longer to land on Alien. But observing these people was them playing with fire. I think they overestimated how clever that phrasing was and underestimated how big of a clue it was. Like, they were probably like, oh, this is slick. No one's going to catch on. No, that was a very big, like, big red buzzer, like, eh, eh, alien, alien. <laughs> but having said that, though, the best aspects of this show have nothing to do with John's true nature. So the fact that I figured out his deal a while ago doesn't impact my opinion of this show or of this episode. And aside from that line, I think everything they did building up to the reveal was well executed anyway, and building the show around uh, Olivia's case and, and John's personality, rather than making John's true nature the focus, I thought was, is, was an incredibly wise decision. But the reveal was only the final shot of the episode. There's a lot of episodes to discuss. So let's talk about that. And I want to start with Davey because one, we don't spend a lot of time on Davey in this episode. And two, he's essentially dead anyway. But um, I opened the episode kind of pissed me to learn that he was still alive. They're like, your son is alive. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> but we learned that he's essentially a vegetable. I, I, Sorry, I, I don't know. Is vegetable, like, is that another word we can't say now? I, I don't know, because it's insensitive to people who won't perceive the term because they're vegetables. But <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know. I, can't, I don't know if I can't say that anymore. But uh, he has no brain function. He's just a working body. And this leads into a great scene where Bernie goes to tell Jonathan, again, also in the hospital, 
uh, about Davy. And Bernie tells this story about taking Davy to a casino as a kid and how how happy he was after finding a lot of success at the crap table. And it's basically a story about how he failed to uh, do what was best for Davy, which was telling him the reality of just how fortunate he'd been um, because it was difficult to do and because Davy was happy at the time. And it's this moment that uh, even though Jonathan doesn't really speak in this scene, or I say it doesn't really, he doesn't speak at all, does he? I don't know, it doesn't matter. It's a moment that two fathers shared over essentially having failed their sons. Uh, Jonathan wasn't a good father to Bernie, and so Bernie wasn't a good father to Davy. and now Davy's, for all intents and purposes, dead, and he does come here to say that we are going to pull the plug on him, and the two of them are left there to feel responsible and shitty for it. And the more you think about it, it's a really sad fucking scene, man. And Bernie breaking down at the end, that scene stood out during an episode in which it had no business standing out. Like, that was one moment in uh, five minutes of time given in a 35-minute episode toward this uh, this this Davies end. A, a, a character that they didn't try to make sympathetic in any kind of way. Maybe in the last episode, maybe, but... Um, yeah, I thought that was a really sad scene for, uh, given that Ber Bernie hasn't been made a sympathetic character, Davey hasn't been made a sympathetic character, but we can relate to the idea of, like, we as humans can relate to the idea of, like, as a father, I failed my son, and now he's gone, and here I am to eat shit over that. Like, that's a relatable idea. So, you might look at, like, yo, fuck Bernie, but at the end of the day, like, uh, it, it's still, it's difficult to not feel something from that scene. I'm not going to say difficult, but, you know, you get what I'm saying. It's a powerful scene. Uh, and to that point, the vast majority of this episode does focus on John and what he learns and thus what we learn. So uh, not a lot of energy put into that scene time-wise, but a lot of impact for the little bit of time that they put in. But uh, let's get to talking about John because he is the focus of the episode. Hey everybody, I just want to take a small break from this review to talk about the various other ways you can engage with me on other platforms. If you're so inclined, uh, and I understand why you wouldn't, I am an acquired taste, but you can join the Patreon where you can get extra content like retro reviews where I review old shows and movies to see if they still hold up today, Mike's Musings where I talk about shows I'm watching that I don't cover on the channel, or Mike's VOD where you can commission me to watch a show which I will then review on the channel. And if you want to engage with me and chat with me more directly, I also implore you to join the Discord and follow the Facebook page. I set up channels in the Discord for all of us to discuss the shows I'm reviewing on the channel. And I also drop new videos in there since it's the easiest platform for me to share to from my phone. The Facebook can be really fun because I sort of live comment on shows I'm watching, often while under the influence, I'm not going to lie. And I'll also share news there, both about television and film and about myself as well. So if you like my content, you want to be more engaged, you think I'm charming, or you simply want to show support, feel free to sign up for the Patreon or join the Discord or Facebook today. Links to all platforms are in every video description. Remember to share all my shit to your respective social media platforms. And now back to this review. I loved how this episode opened. Uh, John says to, what's the dog's name, Wiley? that he thinks is going to be, he's like, I think it's going to be a big day. <laughs> and I love that little piece of foreshadowing because I'm sitting here like, yeah, me too. <laughs> As if I wasn't already pumped up enough about this episode. Uh, but John and Charlie go to visit Stallings. And I want to say up front uh, that I thought Stallings was wild for calling, <laughs> for calling old boy a pussy for being <laughs> afraid of two Dobermans running at him barking. Like they're trying really hard to tell us that Stallings is a scumbag piece of shit. And they're going like really, not overboard, but they're really letting us know the fact that he traffics women was enough. Like I didn't, I didn't need him to call this guy a pussy for no good reason. He traffics women. I, I know he's a piece of shit now. Anyway, uh, John arrives and he tells Charlie, uh, if I'm not back in 10 minutes, his, his, his phrase. And then he proceeds on the five minute walk, <laughs> five minute walk from where Charlie is parked. <laughs> to Stalling's house. Oh, like, by the time he gets there, it's going to be time for Charlie to go in. Uh, I, obviously, I thought that was funny, too, but uh, it's just me fucking around. I also thought it was funny when the dogs came running at John as he approached the house uh, because I put on Facebook in that scene that he must have used his alien powers to get them to calm down. <laughs> and lo and behold... Uh, anyway, so John gets inside, and it looks like everyone's left, but we quickly learn that it's a setup and that Stallings was warned ahead of time of John's arrival. Now... Let me ask you guys real quick. Y'all knew immediately that it was Ruby that warned Stallings, right? Like, that, that wasn't... Like, like, they played... That is kind of like a reveal. Like, he looks at the phone. He's like, I recognize that number. And then he goes to confront Ruby later. Like, 
as soon as it was clear that, that Stallings was still there and that he had been warned, I not, not even that he had been warned, as soon as he they, they popped out and, and uh, uh, the, the woman was uh, had the gun or whatever, immediately I was like, ah, Ruby gave him a heads up. So like, I, I don't know, I'm curious, did you guys not see that coming or did that come as a shot? Because I thought it was pretty obvious. Anyway, like I said, it's a trap and <laughs> no Star Wars. And John is in a really bad situation uh, that he seems not at all concerned to be in. Uh, not concerned for his life, but he's concerned for what he might do to everyone else, even while at what is, by all, for all intents and purposes, a massive disadvantage. He's like, no, 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 wait, 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 please don't shoot me. Just tell me where Olivia is and I won't kill you guys, I swear. I'm like, wait, what? Me and Stahl is like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? But I mean, I, I did deep down, not even deep down, but I, I knew what was coming. I'm like, uh, he's, he's, he's going to do something pretty cool. And that's what happens. Uh, unsurprisingly, uh, Stallings isn't threatened by this. And uh, that when they go to shoot John, John seemingly either smacks the bullet away or blocks it with his hand and quickly dispatches of everyone in glorious, violent fashion. I absolutely loved it. Um, of note here, in addition to smacking the bullet or blocking it with his hand, he gets stabbed with a massive fucking knife. Like, one that you would use to, like... Uh, <laughs> oh, man, what's the, uh, uh, what's the term for uh, when you, like, have a deer and you're skin dressing it? Like, a, a, a knife that you would use for, like, dressing a deer or undressing, whatever. Um, he, but he's not... He's not unharmed by the stabbing of this knife, but he's much more capable than any regular person would be having been stabbed in the gut by a knife of that size. I just thought, yeah, just, I just thought in that moment, a couple of clues already, not already, but still, we're getting clues to his true nature, even though it feels like the reveal is coming. I also made note that Stalling started to say that he had no idea where Olivia was right before John shot him, and he would have no reason to lie in that moment. Uh... John goes to investigate the uh, nefarious locked basement door that obviously had Olivia in it since it had her necklace in the box right next to it. But lo and behold, <laughs> Stallings is... <laughs> can't believe I'm going to say this. Stallings is just a white Michael Vick and he's got a whole bunch of dogs caged up down there. And that now begs the question, where is Olivia and why does Stallings have her necklace? Um... John then goes to see Melanie, and he has her call Henry. Now, if you recall, Henry was the guy that John spoke with outside of the bathroom uh, at the party where Ruby was doing her one-on-ones upstairs. Uh, after he had followed what he thought was a woman into the bathroom, and there was no woman there, he has a conversation with a guy outside of the bathroom. That was Henry. That's who he calls. Uh, well, that's who he has Melanie call to come help him out. He's like, you know, he's, he's thinking like he can help me, but you know, he, as, as a fellow alien, he's gonna know how to, he's gonna know how to prepare me. Uh, fix me up or whatever. So when Henry arrives, uh, he sends Melanie to get supplies. Uh, but it's clearly so that she won't see whatever he's about to do to John. And he takes out a syringe uh, out of a logo, out of a case with a logo on it, and he injects John with something. Uh, later, John wakes up, and and I say later, there's not a bunch of events that pass. But you know, we next scene, John wakes up in the middle of the night. Melanie's still asleep, and John leaves leaves to go head to Ruby's house to confront her about giving Stallings a heads up because I mean I, I can't blame him. As soon as I woke up, that'd have been the first thing I did too. <laughs> uh, she refuses to give him any information, which again that led him to be thinking like, are they really gonna <laughs> are they really gonna push this to the next episode? Uh, but she consistently cites some entity that doesn't want John involved and who John believes also took Olivia. Ruby says they need him to stop looking, they, uh, but doesn't answer John when he asks who they are. Uh, it's only after she pretends to be unable to find her aspirin and John re that John realizes she probably pretended to not be able to find her aspirin so she could call whoever they are and alert them to John's presence. Um, and then so when she returns, John's gone. Um, and that's where... Uh, well, he goes back to his hotel, and then we see him uh, inject himself, presumably with the same thing that Henry injected him with, and that's when he reveals his true form. Now, here's what's so dope about this show. This is a huge reveal, but it doesn't feel that big because the questions that remain and the questions it raises feel way bigger. Like, so let's, let's, let's go over some of these questions. Why doesn't John know who they are? Why is everyone trying to protect John? From what? Or... or uh, trying to prevent him from learning. What are they trying to prevent him from learning? I remember him mentioning something about his sister, Jen, and I remember I said that the caption showed me that it was spelled D-J-E-N, and I used that as proof in my alien theory. I'm like, that's kind of an alien name, right? 
are those two things related? Like his sister and what everyone's trying to protect him from? Like are those are those two things related? And they haven't mentioned the sister in a while. Like I feel like the sister got mentioned like in the first two episodes and then nothing since. Where is Olivia if not with Stallings? And was she was never with Stallings. Why does Stallings have her necklace? Uh, if Stallings doesn't have Olivia, what is his purpose on the show at all, if anything other than a red herring? Like, or is his human trafficking situation and whatever he's doing with dogs also going to tie in uh, to John's story? Lots of interesting questions, man, with these last two episodes. Most importantly, like I said, who the fuck is they? Uh, we can assume the guy that Ruby met with last week, I think it was last week, is one of them. Uh, but we don't know who he is or his relevance, just that uh, he seems to be Ruby's boss. So many interesting questions left to answer on a show that just revealed its main character to be an alien. So I, I think it's pretty remarkable that as of now, this reveal has no real impact on what's still a very compelling mystery led by a very compelling character. I'm just curious how the Olivia plot and John's true nature are going to connect, if at all. Hopefully they will. Uh, let me wrap up by saying that I could say I think without a doubt, that this show is going to end up in my top 10 for 2024. Probably my top five, depending on how it ends. Like, it'd have to crash and burn really bad in these final two. I really, really love this show. There's just too much to like. Colin Farrell, he's, he's incredible. The character of John Sugar is captivating. Entirely aside from the alien shit, he's, he's captivating. The supporting cast is great. The mystery with Olivia and the dynamic among the Siegel family is interesting. I guess, again, if I had to make one criticism, it would be that Stallings was almost like cartoonishly villainous. But again, he's barely important to the show. And that's just, kind of, I feel like I'm searching for criticism at that point, not citing something that's, you know, impacting my ability to enjoy the show. So like I said, I'm fucking loving this show, man. I thought this episode was great. I'm incredibly excited to see what's left for the final two. Let me know what you thought in the comments. And until next week, peace.